Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Welcome to Advancing Northeast. We are delighted to have you here. Yeah. So, same here. yes, ma'am. So, before we move forward, I would like to start with a little introduction uh, about what Advancing Northeast is. So, Advancing Northeast is a digital initiative by the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region. Northeastern Council and Northeast Development Finance Corporation. So it is a one-stop solution portal for the youths of Northeast. We mainly cater to the youths of Northeast in the field of employment, education, and entrepreneurship. So the portal is basically an information hub. And for the same, to serve the same purpose, we have been bringing down globally benchmarked professionals from different industries to give career talks on uh, subjects of interest that could you know, benefit the young minds and the curious minds who are looking for answers for uh, choosing the right uh, career choices. So right. today, yes. Yet again, we come up with uh, yet another career talk session uh, on career in fashion technology. And we have with us Ms. Um, Niranjali Kakoti. She is the principal of Swalkusi Institute of Fashion Technology and alumni of NIFT Delhi. She focuses on the subject of pattern making, which is a very important aspect of fashion designing. So thank you for being here, ma'am. I'm sure that we're going to have a having you on the show. Yes, wonderful session. So, ma'am, moving on to you, why don't we start with a little um, introduction of yours in your own words for our audience? Please, ma'am, continue. Yeah, like uh, you have already mentioned, currently I am uh, working as a principal at Walkusi Institute of Fashion Technology. It is an institute of government of Assam under Kamrup District Administration. And uh, I started my career in... Uh, in 1999 actually when I joined NIFT Delhi so I did my course in fashion design from New Delhi and I graduated in 2002 uh, and uh, since then the journey has uh, been you know continuing in the world of fashion and textiles but uh, to, to say you know uh, I am more involved with the textile and more with the academics since 2015 after I joined this institute as their principal. So okay. that's yeah, a So, ma'am, uh, what about your school? What about your graduation and then post graduation? I mean, have you always been interested? Have you always thought that you would work or join this sector, this fashion sector, designing sector? Uh, to be honest, I didn't know much about fashion when I was in school or college because back then in our time, this profession was not taken very seriously. So, uh, but then, yeah, I, I always wanted, you know, I like this world of glamour, you know, I always saw people in front of camera, not, no one behind it. So uh, I was kind of a little, you know, uh, involved with dancing, drama, and uh, a little bit of modeling, you could say those, uh, you know, this thing. So, but then when I, uh, I studied in uh, St. Mary's School, Guwahati, after completing my thing, I joined uh, Handy Girls College. And uh, I don't know, accidentally, maybe that was in 2000, uh, sorry, it was in 1992 when uh, I just joined uh, high secondary first year and they had conducted this, you know, uh, beauty pageant, Miss Handic, uh, like that. Mm -hmm. And accidentally, I don't know, I just got through and I got the title that year. Since then, you know, I got interest. Okay, what is this? You know, maybe I can try something in this. Uh, just give me one second. Oh. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, so after that, uh, I started doing uh, on uh, stage programs like in dance, drama, and a uh, little bit of modeling. But then after when I completed my graduation, then I realized that, you know, this profession is, uh, you know, very short lived. And, you know, I want, I got more interested, you know, how the things are done. You know, when a model is walking on the ramp, then I saw, you know, the background work, how much work goes into making the clothes and kind of got interested and mixing, matching things. So I thought, you know, why don't I do something in that? I that I started uh, seeing, you know, which would be the best organization or institute to study or take for. And at that time, NIFT was the only pioneer institute in the country. And then uh, my brother also said, yeah, since you want to do, you know, why don't you try give the entrance and all? So I thought, okay, let me try. So I just gave the entrance, and uh, luckily, you know, I got through NIFT Delhi. And there has been no turning back since then. You know, I have learned, you know, whatever I am today is, again, thanks to NIFT. 
obviously absolutely ma'am like you're very very beautiful so winning that pa- pageant and then joining this journey is very evident that uh, and also that your contribution to this industry has also been very you know significant and ma'am since you mentioned that uh, uh, nobody took this profession very seriously when uh, in your days you know so how has been the journey ma'am like what do you think where does it stand now in you know in cases of the industries what are the skills required the colleges the you know budding uh, job prospects regarding to the fashion technology field do you think that it ha- that it has shifted a lot now it it definitely has shifted a lot because uh, back in our time again like i said you know uh, there were very less institutes who used to give this kind of education in fashion <laughs> or textile design and uh, and there were not many job prospects except for the uh, the 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 industry you know the garment industries where they more were catered to exports apart from that designers were hardly used in many you know you could say movies or theater or any sort of because it was not taken very seriously clothing you know when we say fashion people had this misconception that fashion is only about the glamour only about the fashion shows only about the ram shows but nobody knew it see just that we also studied about a history of fashion so suppose somebody is doing a period movie a fashion designer is re- re- you know required not only to design beautiful clothes but also to you know the portray the kind of clothing that was used during that period or you know even if it is a regular drama you need to study the character and accordingly you need to dress up the character right in a movie or a tv or anything but these kind of things were not taken care of back then and only you know uh, the fashion designer or a uh, fashion technologist was only required in the garment industry where they will just you know make patterns and you know follow orders of the customers and uh, you know deliver the order but right now i see that people you know in every sector even for say music videos also people are taking fashion design even for wedding i have seen you know they coordinate the groom and the bride's clothes and they hire a designer you know what all to wear so yes people have taken the sector seriously and they have i think seen the outcome that how a designer a trained professional can make a difference so uh, there is a lot of job prospects nowadays and so has uh, are also institutes they uh, have a lot of institute even nift when i uh, entered nif there were only four centers all over the country but now nif itself has more than 16 centers so and they have also started a lot of other uh, you know uh, courses like back then we had only four courses to choose from but now they have like different kind of courses like fashion technology textile technology leather garment uh, knitwear so separately they have lot of segments so there is a lot of prospects nowadays in terms of job in terms of uh, career and also there is a lot of institutes where these uh, kids nowadays can go and get the training training yes um absolutely ma'am so ma'am uh, how would you differentiate fashion technology and fashion designing this is a like a very basic query that might arise among the audiences because students are not that aware of the nuances and details of what this industry has to offer like you said that they only think that the life limelight is everything but there are so many fields and sectors ma'am like the apparel industry like the pattern making you do so ma'am would you like to you know just brief a little on those yeah see uh, what i would say is uh, designing and technology they are uh, you know they go side by side so designing is basically designing on the paper where you were just uh, considering the silhouettes of the garments the colors of the garment the kind of fabric that is going to be used the trims and also you know the entire look the styling of it that is the designing the fashion designing part of it and the fashion technology comes into uh, in the uh, like the creating of that design like say, like you said the pattern making part the pattern even you know not only the patterns sometimes for creating some particular design we also need to create the fabric you know maybe if the ready made fabric is not available so we need to know what kind of yarn composition what kind of combination of yarns will be required to get that particular fabric or that particular material with which that particular design can be created suppose we want something very stiff uh, yet it has to be you know uh, uh, very uh, drapeable or it has to be something which needs to have a stretch so we need to know that you know we need to have a stiff uh, material with mixed with lycra maybe 
So, but th these are the technological aspects which a fashion technologist takes care. And then, uh, you know, the designing is uh, basically the particular, the sketch of it or the color, what kind of colors are going to go into it or what kind of styling, suppose a trouser with what kind of a blazer or a, you know, waistcoat or what. So that, uh, that it, there's a very slight difference between the thing. But, you know, then again, you know, knowing both is important because uh, if a designer doesn't know what kind of materials or, you know, what kind of things goes into the making of it, then definitely, you know, sometimes that, that particular look which the designer wants cannot be created because if you don't have the raw material, you know, which needs to be used, so that effect might not come and you need to compromise with your design. Similarly, for a technologist, while using the material or while make creating the uh, the design the the pattern of the garment if that uh, if if you need a seam line somewhere and suppose that doesn't fall in that if that uh, fashion technology doesn't have the proper idea of the design then uh, then maybe you know that that effect of the design might not come a simple seam line might change the entire look of the garment mm -hmm. right so it's very important to understand both the things and in uh, in if you uh, in in the long courses, you know the regular three or four year courses in NIFT or any other institute, they teach you know both the aspects so that once the student is out of the organization, they understand each and every aspect of it properly. Yes, yes, ma'am, absolutely. So there are so many fields, right, ma'am? And also one is uh, dependent on the other. Like everything is co-related and co-dependent. So that is the yes. beauty of the work. Yes, ma'am. So the students actually have a lot of scope and opportunity in their hands to whichever field they're interested to, they can join nowadays because there are a lot of opportunities. They just need to do the research. Yes, ma'am. They need to do the research and they need to be focused. Like I have seen a lot of garment industries where they hire only illustrationists. Suppose, mm -hmm. you know, a fashion, uh, a student of fashion design or fashion technology, you know, it's not necessary that you excel in everything. Mm -hmm. Suppose one kid is very good in illustration. So there are a lot of opportunities in export houses and buying houses nowadays where they hire only Ill illustrators. You know, they can uh, be good in it and then they can actually make a career out of it. Somebody who is really interested in pattern making, so, you know, that person may be specialized in pattern making and they could be a very good pattern master and they're very well paid off nowadays. Somebody who is maybe, you know, very interested in cutting. So because all these segments are different, it's not, of course, it's important to understand and know everything. But what I believe is you need to excel in one particular aspect where you can, you know, have the master on. And yes, there's so many aspects that, you know, anywhere anybody can find a job. Yeah, ma'am, very, very inspiring words. I'm sure the students will really be benefited. Uh, now, ma'am, we would uh, want to know about your institute, Falkusi Institute of Fashion Technology. What are the courses offered? What kind of examinations do these students have to go through? The admission and selection procedure, ma'am. Yeah, the Falkusi Institute of Fashion Technology is, like I said, it's a government of Assam organization. And it was started by our Honorable Chief Minister in the year 2008. Uh, the main motto of the institute was to uplift the weavers, the local weavers. Walkusi, like you all know that, you know, it's an organ, it's a place where, you know, a lot of uh, traditional Mekhalas others and weaving happens. It's called the Manchester of the East, right? So since a uh, lot of uh, textiles and every the whole every household in Walkusi have looms in their homes, still some at some point, you know, these people have uh, this struggle, uh, with the sales and they feel that you know they are not getting proper market for their uh, for the merchandise so that is why um, honorable cm hemonto biswa sarma sir he started this institute in 2008 to give design inputs to the local weavers so that they come and train here uh, train in the institute and you know uh, understand what the world needs and maybe a mix and match of different materials or uh, understand the modern trends and colors, and then uh, you know use them in their uh, mekhala sadar, and so that the market increases. So that was the motto of the institute. We still train the local uh, local people, but then again it has passed on since you know we could not be training only a handful of people in one small village, right? So a lot of people in Valkusi got trained and they started their own business or looms, and they are doing. And now we have a venture. We also train 
students from different parts of Assam. So now we are training partners with Assam Skill Development Mission and Assam State Rural Livelihood Mission. So these uh, uh, artisans, uh, basically weaving artisans, they come from uh, their villages and uh, take your training in our institute. And then they go back and then you know we teach them to create uh, something which they not normally do. Like we, we uh, mostly we have handloom training, but we also have fashion training depending on the requirements. Like say, for example, in handloom, we have sectional warping and all that, which normally uh, in our Assamese loom, they don't do. So we teach them these kind of things, then different kind of uh, uh, weaves. Like in Assam, we only do plain weave with extra weft motif. That is what is the weave that is used. So we teach them uh, different weave, like twill weave, satin weave, satin weave. Then we also use them how to use four treadle in the looms. And we teach them uh, herring bone design. So these kind of different techniques we teach them. And we you know, ask them to incorporate those things into their whatever they make, the traditional uh, mechala shaders or stores or anything, so that they get, uh, you know, they could develop more market oriented product. Then again, all our uh, trainings are uh, free. We don't charge any fees from the students. So it's basically our trainings, uh, they are funded by sponsorship from either any organization or uh, we also take CSR from the companies like PowerGrid or uh, ONGC, NRL. Uh, this is how uh, the institute is running. So we don't have, uh, say, you know, a regular uh, long course or like that. Okay. So we mostly do skill development short term courses as of now. Okay, ma'am. I think that is uh, the most important part that everybody needs to focus on now, the skill development, because there is so much literacy, but there is no employment. So I think that will create more space. Uh, ma'am, uh, regarding this employment thing only, so after your students, after uh, whoever, you know, gets the training after uh, from your institute, after that, have you seen examples uh, of people working and applying everything they learned in their real lives. Yes, definitely they do. Uh, I would not say 100%, but definitely 50% of our students, they are, a lot of them are getting engaged in the cluster. There are a lot of mm -hmm. handloom uh, clusters in uh, government of Assam or II, Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship. They have a lot of handloom clusters. So a lot of our students get uh, you know, jobs there as a cluster designer, as cluster coordinator. So, you know, I have seen a lot of people in a lot of places in Assam where my students are getting engaged. And on top of that, a lot of them have also, you know, taken loans from various banks and started up their own weaving units, you know, where they are doing, you know, making these kind of diversified products and they're doing quite well. So uh, we are able to train in, and take out good students who and these trainings have helped them. Yes, ma'am. So you have examples. Uh, so, ma'am, um, uh, what do you also provide any kind of entrepreneurial support? Like you said that your student also started up their own weaving machine. So any testing labs or any kind of processes involved? Uh, testing labs are here in Hualpusi. So during the yeah. training, we show them everything. We take them around. There is a silk testing lab where this uh, test the purity of uh, silk. See, again, we being in Hualpusi and uh, the main motto of the Institute was to uplift the silk of Assam. So that is why, you know, again, uh, we are a little oriented towards handloom. So we don't do any power loom training as such. So uh, in handloom, we teach them everything from testing the purity of the yarns to, uh, you know, different kinds of dyeing, natural dyeing, chemical dyeing. And after the weaving is done, quality checks and everything. So uh, we uh, all the, even though our trainings are very short, we have, you know, uh, consolidated our programs. And then in the short span of time, we show them and we teach them everything. We also take them to the different industries, uh, the silk uh, manufacturing industries in Hualkusi and give them a practical, uh, you know, uh, a practical knowledge of how it works uh, from the making of the thing till the marketing of it. Okay, ma'am. Great, great. I think because a sound, you know, Hualkusi really makes us, proud Assam, that Assam has it. It's full of resources, full of talent, and you are grooming it. So congratulations on that, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, now we'll uh, move 
back again to your uh, education time like as an alumni of NIFT NIFT is one of the leading institutions sort of the pioneering institutions so students really want to study there so how uh, how did it shape you as an individual like on your career choices and everything how significant was it this like i said at the beginning itself NIFT is you know has given me everything what i am today uh, like uh, I didn't know whether I would get through when I applied. Uh, there were only four centers of NIFT and there were more than five less candidates who has uh, applied. So I thought whether, you know, I have a very slim chance of getting through. But still I thought, okay, you know, why not let me try. And back then we did not even have any, you know, those coaching classes or anything to, you know, who will help us with that. So I just applied and uh, on the day of the result, I went with my mother and I was checking the list from below you know, whether I got through and then I was going up, up and I was surprised to see my name on the fifth. So, oh, you know, yeah. out of all the candidates, so I got uh, selected. I was fifth in the entire batch. So uh, that gave me a chance to give an, you know, to get the choice of center. So definitely I chose uh, New Delhi center, which was uh, the best. Still, It is still the best, I think, of all the other centers. So NIF Delhi has... Uh, taught really taught me everything from punctuality to working hard I still remember you know working all nights for two three nights continuously sleeping in a lab in the institute because mm -hmm. you know assignments don't get over and we still have to do the submissions so that gave, kind of gave me you know a, you know power to really go you know to do something that it's not that it just owning oh, hora so leave it it's not that that you really need to focus and whatever if your assignment does you need to do it you know, however you do it is your thing. So, you know, that go-getter kind of a feel, uh, you know, that challenging. So that that made me more challenging. And at the same time, I uh, think, you know, that is that also made me a perfectionist because uh, now I don't have this, a uh, lot of people, especially in Assam, I see even my students have this thing. Okay, fine, this is done. Uh, it's done. So let it be, you know, ho jayega. So that attitude doesn't take you anywhere. That is what I feel. So, you know, even today, you know, that made me this, that, you know, if, if I take one project, I make sure that, okay, this is, this has to be done and it has to be done perfectly. So what I also tell the students, the youngsters nowadays, that the attitude, you know, that calm, chill out attitude doesn't take you anywhere. So you have to be a perfectionist in whatever you do. Like I said, you know, nobody can be a master in everything. So, uh, so that is why you need to really choose what you want, what your calling is, what makes you happy. And you stick to it and go ahead with it. So that is what NIFT has taught me. It's not that, uh, you know, of course, pattern making and uh, illustration that any institute uh, gives. But what NIFT gives is uh, that kind of an attitude in a student where you need to be a go-getter and you need to be a perfectionist, which, which are very important in this field. Yes, ma'am. So it really it did really shape you as a completely different individual. Yeah. So, ma'am... Uh, uh, you just had to apply right back in your time, but uh, how how is the process now? Like, what are the kind of top in entrance examinations uh, to get uh, it? The process is still the same. You need to apply, mm -hmm. and the first is the uh, the quantitative test, the short mm -hmm. uh, the yes no answers, and after that they call you for a, a group discussion. Mm -hmm. And after that, the final thing is the interview. So basically three rounds. Of, I'm still associated with an IFT Shila. I'm mm -hmm. a visiting faculty there. So uh, uh, it, it's, it's still the same process. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, now there are a lot of centers. So I think getting through, it's uh, it won't be that tough nowadays. Okay. Because okay, a lot of centers and a lot of courses also in an IFT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that will really push the students now. I hope that more and more students join this uh, field if they're really interested. So ma'am, uh, the interview processes and the group discussions, since you are now also associated with NIFT Shillong, like you said, so what kind of, you know, what do the students really need to crack these interviews or these uh, group discussions and everything? Yeah, I would say, you know, all be yourself. Uh, most of the students I see, they try to copy and they, you know, go through old uh, question papers and see, oh, this was asked. So, you know, if I mm -hmm. ask, uh, tell them this answer, so it will be. But, you know, in the process, what happens, I have seen, if you try to copy somebody else's answer, you know, try to give an answer which you personally don't feel, still you want to give thinking that the doors will like it. But somewhere uh, uh, down the line, you feel that, no, you know, it's not taking you there. Because personally, you don't feel that. 
but still you want to say because somebody wants uh, else wants to hear it right so i would suggest the students not to do that be strong be uh, you know believe in yourself and be true and honest to yourself if you feel that something is correct you stick to that and in if the topic whatever is given to you you talk on that topic and what you feel about it not what your interviewer or what the jury wants to hear and that is what i uh, believe everybody looks in a student that you know how confident you are and how well you can take on your thought process so uh, that is what i will ask the student just be yourself be stick you know uh, stick to what you believe and be strong in it and have but uh, valid reasons that why you believe in that particular topic or that thing and uh, you know go ahead with that that is that is most important instead of mm -hmm. changing oh this may be ho sakta hai or it is, maybe it's that so instead of shifting your focus from here and there uh, they should be more focused in one thing believe in yourself and just you know go ahead that is be confident yes very 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 well said ma'am so ma'am you have been working in northeast uh, for so long so how do you see the potential of uh, students uh, who are interested in the fashion technology field to you know be secure and stable in northeast india do they really have a secure ground to be established as a fashion technologist or designer here yeah i think you know uh, whenever i travel to northeast you know uh, maybe uh, meghalaya or uh, arunachal that side i see that girls already have such a good dressing sense they have very good style sense i see you know uh, uh, they very you know like i would not say that western culture is you know more stylish but uh, but if you see we tend to follow western culture right but over here in northeast i see people are already way ahead of anybody you know who is in delhi or kolkata say in terms of style so since uh, our students not only girls even boys you know since uh, people uh, the kids of our northeast are already so much inclined to fashion and they already have uh, this something within themselves you know maybe the kind of colors or the kind of silhouettes they want to wear you know that is uh, i think still a little uh, ahead of what uh, people in the rest of the country uh, you know uh, follow nowadays so since they already have it in them i think if you get a little direction a little push uh, through proper channelizing through proper education then uh, this kids and in fact a lot of kids are doing really well from the northeast in the field of fashion uh, uh, even in uh, globally so uh, definitely since it's already there in the blood so little streamlining it's really it's going to gi give a very good uh, opportunity to them yes ma'am uh, and like i said the uh, jobs uh, you know it, there's no scarcity of uh, jobs for good people nowadays but the only thing is uh, it's sad to say that not many industries are there in the northeast especially mm -hmm. of garments so but then definitely you know what can all one i mean has to move out to other places for better opportunities but it's always there it's always there yes ma'am we can only be positive about its development in the near future like things and changes are happening so we can only hope also ma'am uh, how is your like, like institute helping in paving ways for the ones who have for example if somebody has already passed out from a institute they have had their courses or degree from a institute and then uh, would they, it really help them if they join your institute like for skill development how does it add as a extra catalyst for their career it uh, does add actually we do get a lot of students who have already passed from other institutes like in us in guwahati we have uh, assam textile institute indian institute of handloom technology so you know this kids uh, they uh, they complete their course their three or four year whatever degree courses and after that they come to us because we give a lot of practical training so uh, uh, you know uh, uh, it's not only about text like in in the other institute of course because of syllabus they are made like that that a lot of text is required a lot of you know uh, not only the practical but a lot of theory so when you are studying you need to score good marks so the kids have this tendency of like you know uh, mugging up questions and more inclined towards the theory part of it because that is where the marks is the score more in the theory leaving the practical part of it you know during the course when they're studying so but when it comes to job or placements the practical is more important because even if the kids manage to crack a interview and get through a job they cannot sustain it they cannot you know uh, continue with the, it because they don't have that much practical knowledge 
So, and since we provide 75% uh, uh, of our trainings are practical training, and we give a lot of uh, importance to this practical learning because we prepare kids so that, you know, they can work in the industry. Uh, you know, industry in the sense, uh, uh, whatever the demand is nowadays in an artist, like, like I said, for cluster, random clusters and all. So we train our students accordingly so that they can get involved, involved or associated with these clusters. So that is why a lot of kids, these kids come to our uh, institute for training. And just recently, we also got one uh, student from IIT uh, Guwahati. Again, he is doing something in skill development. So he's like, can I get a training because uh, I need this practical thing. And since we provide short term training, it is short because the time taken is not much, only about uh, one month to 45 days. And then we give the entire thing is mostly practical. We have classes from uh, six uh, from nine o'clock to six o'clock. So the days uh, where uh, when the students uh, are in in training and and at Walkusi Institute, it's proper training without much breaks and all. We also have classes on holidays and Saturday Sundays. So that is why you know le in less time they learn a lot. So these kids come and mainly because it's practical and we prepare them completely practically for these. Uh, uh, for this kind of cluster handling a cluster and uh, uh, small industries. Okay, ma'am. So like they say that time might be short, but the results are huge, <laughs> inversely proportional. Yeah. Uh, also, ma'am, uh, like the Hualkusi Institute of Fashion Technology, are there any other similar industries in Northeast or some that many of us do not really know about? Uh, in, in training, uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am, like similar kind of institutes where students can go and get trained. Yeah, in Assam, like I said, uh, there is an Assam Textile Institute who offers three, uh, three years uh, degree courses, uh, both in fashion technology and textile technology. Then we have Indian Institute of Handloom Technology in Khanapara, that is another central government uh, 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 institute where they, they, they also have three year uh, courses in uh, textile technology. So uh, apart from this, I think there are a lot of other private institutes also which <laughs> offer courses. But these two are mainly government uh, institutes. Uh, okay, one is government of Assam, the other is central government. Also, ma'am, apart from skill development training institutes, uh, what are the main leading institutes? Can you just name a few for the students to, you know, properly curate and sort out accordingly so that it's easier for them? Like, and yeah, I have say... obviously there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and IFT is there. JD Institute of Fashion is doing quite well nowadays. Then in Delhi, there is Indian International Institute of Fashion Technology. Mm -hmm. Then in Assam, I think when Royal, Royal Global University have their fashion design yes. courses. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, and also, is there any central level kind of examination, ma'am, to get through any major institute or something? Uh, NIFT has a uh, exam that is again a national level exam. So you mm -hmm. can apply and you can give the exam in any of the centers. You can choose the centers and give the exam in any of the center. But the mm -hmm. to apply is is uh, uh, you know a nationwide application forms. Okay, so it's at, everything is on a website nowadays. So they can yeah, just, they can just go and research. Much about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely, ma'am. So now uh, you have already highlighted all the important points. Apart from a professional life, ma'am, what are your hobbies? Do you also apply it as a hobby sometimes, designing and everything? Uh, not really. Just I stitch all my clothes myself even today. <laughs> that okay. is one thing I like to say. I create my own fabric and I stitch all my clothes myself. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah, that's a hobby you could say. I love making big patterns. And on top of that, I love to travel. I really travel a lot. So whenever I get a chance, even if I get a two-day holiday, I just, you know, move out and travel. I like to see different places. So that is one hobby that, you know, connects me to the people. <laughs> Absolutely. So that is also that also helps in your work, I think, ma'am. You see these different things, and then you can get the inspiration to create more designs and everything. Right? Inspiration is inspiration yes. is always there in always and there. then you have to see different places. Yes, ma'am. Lastly, ma'am, we'd like to know a little on pattern making since that is your specialization. So if you could just let us know a little. So if anybody is interested and they do not know that pattern making can also be a thing, they can also go forward now. Pattern making is the key thing in fashion design. That is what I believe. Because uh, it's not just the sketch of it, but you also need to know the technical aspects and how that particular sketch is going to uh, become a garment. 
you know, where the stitch line is going to be, where our dart has to going to be, you know, uh, it's not uh, like, you know, fashion is not, not only about making a, a model look beautiful with beautiful clothes. It's also about, suppose I, I don't have a perfect body, but still, you know, I need to look beautiful and how I need to look beautiful. A designer has to make clothes accordingly so that, you know, it flaunts whatever my drawbacks are. Like, you know, uh, if, if suppose I'm overweight, so it needs, uh, the designer needs to make sure to make the kind of uh, uh, lines, the patterns where, you know, it can hide my flaws in my body and still make a body look beautiful. Suppose somebody who's very thin, still, you know, that person, it's not that you cannot say, oh, this person is ugly. That is why this garment is going to look ugly on it. It's not that. It's how to make somebody who is not so, so appealing or good looking make uh, beautiful. And pattern making makes a great part in it. Because unless we have that, we cannot uh, give the same garment to somebody who is really petite and somebody who is really large. Because definitely it's go not going to look, uh, you know, uh, good in both the kind of body types. So a pattern master or a designer who makes a different pattern can make those changes while doing the pattern so that, you know, it flaunts both the body types. We can have the same fabric, the same kind of cuts, but still different, uh, you know, in the style lines or in the seam, seam lines, we can do the variation so that it flaunts both the body type. And that is why it is very understand to know the proper pattern making. And a uh, lot of kids I see nowadays, you know, think that are here to pattern master Karlega. But but pattern master is not, you know, you cannot take something very lightly unless we ourselves know, you know, how to do it and how to get the desired look. We cannot just depend on some, uh, you know, a random, not very qualified person to, you know, create magic out of it, right? So uh, pattern making is, is the key. I think uh, there's one book I always carry with me. Pattern making by Helen Armstrong. So mm -hmm. I always tell my students who are really sincere that they take this book as your Bible. You know, this is something which is going to take you everywhere. Like any problem or anything is just refer to that book. And there the solution is there. there. Okay, yeah. thank you, ma'am. You highlighted so many little, little points that I, even I personally did not know. And whoever is watching us, I'm sure they'll be very motivated to work for, you know, towards it. Because pattern making is also such a skill that not many people know, not many parents know that their children can be, uh, you know, working in this field someday and also earn real good money. So that is very, very important for everybody to learn, especially for Northeast. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we really had a good time having you and learned a lot also I request everyone watching also to get that book if you're really interested in pattern making make it your bible as ma'am said and just be yourself and yeah we hope that we have a more engagement with you in the future ma'am thank you for connecting with advancing northeast i also enjoyed a lot talking to you thank yeah. you so much thank you ma'am also the video will be available in all the advancing northeast platforms youtube facebook instagram linkedin twitter you can go and check uh, in there thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much bye bye, -bye.